Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to forge a knife like this from a simple 10mm drill bit like this. So this knife is incredibly sharp. As you can see, it easily passes the paper test. This knife's really good for whittling sticks, just bark carving and normal whittling. And because it's so sharp, it just carves through the wood as if it's nothing. On top of that, because drill bits are made of such high carbon steel, I've heat hardened this knife and it holds an edge really well. I'd just like to start by saying this is my first ever forging video where I heat up a piece of metal and forge it into a knife. So I'd really appreciate any tips or comments that you've got on how I can improve this process. So as I said earlier, this knife is made from an old drill bit. This is a metal drill bit, but I actually made this knife from a wood drill bit. You can use pretty much any drill bits, but I'm using a 10mm one since it's the largest one I have. And obviously the larger drill bit you have, the longer and thicker knife that it's going to make. So if you have a smaller drill bit, it's going to make a smaller, thinner knife. These are quite cheap drill bits, but they're not the very cheapest drill bits you can get. So these are made of high carbon, high quality steel, but they're not really expensive. So they're not made of tungsten carbide. If you do have a solid carbide drill bit, you probably aren't going to be able to use it for this. Because as far as I'm aware, you can't forge tungsten carbide. So with all of that out the way, let's see how you make this knife. So the first thing that you're going to need is going to be a forge and this is a coal powered forge and as you can see from the ingots over there I've been using it to melt aluminium and if you want to see some of my aluminium projects there'll be a link in the description to my aluminium casting playlist. This is a simple forge that's just powered by coal as I said earlier and the only thing that you need to do to turn it on and make it really powerful is turn on this blower here. And that supplies lots of oxygen into the fire, which makes it really, really hot. And this is quite a large forge, and it's probably a little bit too big for a project just like this. So I'm going to be making sure that I don't overheat it. There's a great tutorial on how to make a forge like this by Grant Thompson, the King of Random. Or also, you could use the Soup Can Forge tutorial by Nighthawk, Nighthawk and Light. And I'll link both of those in the description down below. So first thing you need to do is take the drill bit and place the blunt end in the fire and then I'm going to heat it up and start to flatten it out into the knife blade. Hammering on the drill bit I'm just going to be using a 22 ounce ball peen hammer and I'm also going to be using a 20 kilogram anvil and both of these can just be interchanged with pretty much anything and you can just use a rock instead of the anvil. So as you can see the drill bit's really really hot now and I'm going to start to flatten it out. So this is what it looks like so far, it's pretty straight and pretty thin but I'm going to just draw it out a little bit more then taper it so that it makes a nice blade. So this is what the knife blade looks like so far. I've flattened it out and made it straight and this is about the same size that I want the blade to be now. So I'm going to start to hammer in the bevel and then I'll add the tip later. Hammering in the bevel I basically just hold the knife at a slight angle on the flat surface of the anvil and basically just hammer it until it sort of forms the taper of a blade. So this is what the knife looks like after I've finished forging it and I've kind of half forged the bevel and then it comes to a flat end here but it is thicker on this side and then it sort of looks like a bit of a butter knife at the moment so I'm just going to sketch on a design and then grind it out and file it using the belt sander and metal files. So I've sort of got a design in my head of how I'm going to make this. I'm going to flatten out the blade here and then curve it up into a tip here and just have a flat edge back here. So now I'm just going to be using my belt sander to grind it into the right shape and you could also use an angle grinder for this or a bench grinder or pretty much anything that can grind away metal and if you had the time then you could also use metal files but it would take quite a long time. <laughs> 
So this is what the blade looks like after rough grinding and I think it looks quite good. It's in quite a nice shape and when I hold it, it feels already like it can make a really nice knife. So now I'm going to start to grind the edges and the bevels and make sure that everything's flat and straight. Because you can see it's slightly curved this way. So I'll just grind it flat and then that'll create a point. So I like to start to grind the knife bevel just using the flat part on my belt sander. But you can also just again just use any other grinder or just metal files for this. I've ground it until it pretty much forms a blade shape. I'm then going to go over to my vise, clamp it up and use metal files to smooth out the edge. So this is what the knife blade looks like after I've finished filing and grinding the bevel. And as you can see it comes and meets in a nice sharp blade in the middle and it's even. As well as that it's symmetrical on both sides. So now it's time to heat treat the blade and I've got my coal forge all heated up and ready to heat treat it. So the way that this heat treatment is going to work is I'm going to heat up the blade like this in the forge and then going to take it out holding it with a pair of pliers and test it with this magnet. When it reaches a critical temperature and it's glowing yellow from inside the forge anywhere above that temperature the steel will no longer be magnetic and then it's hot enough to heat treat so when it no longer sticks to this strong magnet i'll be able to take it out and then quench it in this motor oil this oil that i'm using here is motor oil you can also use other oils but i think motor oil is best because it helps sort of add carbon into the steel so i'm going to put the blade in now but because this blade is so small and thin got to be really careful that I don't burn it or melt it so I'm just going to be checking the temperature every couple of minutes really regularly so it's been about 30 seconds let's take it out and see how it's doing oh wow it's really hot but no it's not quite hot enough it's still slightly magnetic I'm just going to leave that in for about 15 more seconds and then see what happens I reckon this will be hot enough now and yet yeah, it's completely glowing, it's non-magnetic. Now let's dip it in the motor oil, moving it backwards and forwards just like this. There we go, the knife has now been hardened. So this is what the knife looks like after the heat treatment process and I'm going to do the file test now to check that the heat treatment process has worked. So just take a regular metal working file and just rub it down the knife blade and basically if this knife is hard enough you just feel the file slide straight off and it shouldn't be digging in or scratching the metal. So that basically means that this knife blade is now pretty much up to file hardness but this is actually too hard and the knife blade is really brittle now if I were to drop it on the floor it would probably crack or shatter so I need to temper it and that's where this oven comes into play. So for tempering we can use a lower temperature than we needed for heat treating and basically the way that I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to be using this new toast oven which I've bought mainly for HDPE projects but it also is going to work for this knife so I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to set this oven on around 180 degrees and I'm going to leave it in there for two hours and this will hopefully bring it up to a hardness of quite hard around 55 to 60 Rockwell hardness so that will hopefully mean that this knife is holds an edge very well and it's good for stuff like carving or whittling. So I'm going to be leaving the knife in here for probably about an hour and a half. So for a while I was thinking of ideas for what I should use for the handle of this knife. I was thinking I could either take another 10mm drill bit, just like this one, and then just drill into a piece of wood and glue that on. But I thought that would be a little bit boring. So then what I thought I was going to do is do some handle wrap my carter and I could also do that. But then the idea came to me that because these drill bits have all of these nice sort of grooves in them it'll be really good to sort of melt some hdp plastic on recycle that from some old bottle lids and that will create a really interesting handle and i don't think any anyone's really done this before so while this is tempering in the oven and the oven's heating up i'm gonna then want to start to make a mold so that i can press hdp in and around this handle so for the mold that i'm going to press the molten hdp into i'm just going to be using this steel tube that will then just be cut off after the hdp has cooled and i'm just going to be pressing the knife handle in this way so I just need to hammer this end shut.
So now I've got this folded over, it's pretty much watertight and none of the plastic will be coming out the bottom there. What I'm going to be doing is once the knife has finished tempering for one and a half hours in the oven, I'm then going to take it and melt all of the HDP from the milk cups inside here and then put in the knife handle, twist it about to sort of mix up the pattern and then hold it in place as it sets. So it's been about one and a half hours at 180 degrees and the knife's finished heat treating. Now it's time to start to melt some of the plastic. While the knife is still hot, I'm not going to let it cool down. Then I'm going to press the hot knife into the plastic. So the plastic which I'm going to be using, as I said earlier, is HDP, which stands for high density polyethene. And I'm not going to be using low density polyethene since it's not as strong and has a lower melting point. I'm get, and my source is going to be these HDP bottle lids, which comes from milk carton and also fizzy drinks bottles but you can also use stuff from old milk cartons white is a good source and also hdp gallon buckets they're good as well in past tutorials i've showed you how to make sheet hdp like this and also then larger sheets like this in great detail and the links to them will be in the description down below this plastic can be identified by the two within the recycling symbol and it either says hdp below it or pehd sometimes so as I said earlier, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to cut up some of the bottle lids, put in a variety of colours inside this tube and melt them down. I'm then going to sort of mix them up with the back of the knife blade. I'm then going to put it in and hold it in place as it cools. But first, to make sure that I can actually fit the lids inside here, I need to cut them up into smaller pieces. Thanks for watching guys, this video is getting quite long so I'm going to split it up into two parts and that's all for part one and part two will hopefully be uploaded within the next couple of days and once it is the video will be linked in the description down below.